Good morning. Today we got something rather different, and I trust this will prepare you for whatever you've got ahead, but it's a rather beautiful story. If you have a Bible, and if you're free to read it, will you turn with me to Mark chapter 10 and verse 46? By the way, remember, if you're driving, don't turn to it. I'll read to you. Gets terribly difficult, doesn't it? Although if you're in Philadelphia, you may be at the traffic lights and you'll be able to take a quick look at the New Testament. No, I'll read to you. You just listen. Mark 10, 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Why is that special? Well, I hope you were with us yesterday, or even on Friday, because if you were, you remember what was happening. Jesus had set his face to the cross. Jesus was heading for Jerusalem. And in heading for Jerusalem, he was going to suffer and to die. And yesterday we saw that he was giving his life a ransom for many. Jesus wasn't dying for Jesus. Jesus was going to die for you and me. And it wasn't the easiest step anyone's ever taken. He set his face steadfastly to Jerusalem. And as he's going along, he's coming out of the city of Jericho. Now, if ever you go to Israel, notice where Jericho is set. Because to me, it's one of the most intriguing settings in the whole of that land of Israel. Here is an oasis, very, very green, in the middle of the Judean desert, down by the River Jordan, just north of the Dead Sea. And it's a beautiful little town. The best orange juice I ever tasted in my life was in Jericho. A beautiful place, blessed with water. Here they are coming out of the city, and there's a blind man sitting by the roadside. Now, let's be fair about it. Most of us wouldn't have looked. Well, Richard, how do you know that? Because most of us can pass the street people by in Philadelphia and think to ourselves, that's their fault. They shouldn't have ever got in that state if we verbalize our thoughts at all. But we pass by on the other side. Jesus, our Savior who we serve, Jesus who dwells within us, doesn't ever pass by. He stops, he loves, he cares, he serves. You remember what we saw yesterday? Jesus says, the one who is great among you who's, is the one who serves. It's that young fellow who goes in his parents' car and takes blankets to those street people. He's the one who serves. And quite obviously, he's a young fellow who doesn't care who it is. All he sees is a need. Whoever he is and wherever he is spiritually, he has the heart of the Lord Jesus. Now, here is Jesus set for Jerusalem, looking toward the cross, seeing the suffering, and there's a blind man shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Interestingly enough, the people did what they always did. Be quiet. Wrap it up. He doesn't want to bother about you. You're just a blind beggar. Get on with your begging. Don't bother him. He's a rabbi. He's a teacher, whoever they thought he was. And that's the response of the world. The person in need shouts. They're told to be quiet. Now we have nations shouting. And people starving across this world. And here we are with our riches and our food and our materialism. And here we are blessed and blessed and blessed. How do we respond? Well, Jesus responded very simply. He just stopped exactly where he was. Let's go back. Let's see what happened. Jesus stopped and said, 
call him. Call him. And then there's a principle here that Billy Graham brings out. When Jesus does things, nearly always he did them in public. He didn't work behind the scenes. Jesus worked absolutely in public. Call him. And the whole procession stops and nothing's going to happen until a blind beggar is brought to Jesus. That's fascinating. Do you see how Jesus loves? Do you see how Jesus cares? Do you see how Jesus serves? Now question, are we like that? Do we really have the thoughts of Jesus? Do we really have the heart of Jesus? Do we have the compassion of Jesus? Do we as individuals really care? Or do we tend to pass by on the other side? Jesus cared. And of course then he challenges Bartimaeus in a rather strange question, I guess. The man jumps up, throws his cloak aside and comes to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. We say, just a minute, Jesus. This fellow's blind. What do you think he wants you to do? But the question's still there. You see, it is true. Some people don't want to be healed. Oh, Richard, that's ridiculous. No, it isn't. If ever you can get one of those Harold Hill books, read them. Books by Harold Hill. But let me give you a qualification to that. I always do to our folk. Don't read it unless you've got a sense of humor. Because if you haven't got a sense of humor, you're not going to appreciate Harold Hill. He's an engineer who found Jesus late in his life. And he comes out with the most marvelous stories. And when you read it, you'll find such a tremendous thrust there of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you get hold of his books, just see the way the Lord Jesus works today. There's a man who cares. There's a man who stretches out his hand to those in need. We have to see that. So here's Jesus standing there, and the man's in front of him. And one day, Harold Hill was at a meeting, and he was all gung-ho because he'd seen a healing through his own prayers. And he, with his friends, saw a man getting a woman out of a car and into a wheelchair, and they dashed over to pray for her. Do you know what she said? Don't pray for me. Don't you pray for me. What a shock. Why not? I've served this man all my life and now he's got to look after me. Can you imagine? She'd rather be in a wheelchair making her husband dance to her tune than she did to be healed. No wonder Jesus sometimes says, do you want to be made whole? What do you want? Do you want your sight back? Why does he say it to Bartimaeus? Because Bartimaeus, the moment I give you your sight back, your life changes. You can't sit at the roadside begging. You've got to go and find a job. You can't expect others to help you now. You've got your sight back. Are you ready for that, Bartimaeus? Oh, yes. But then something beautiful that I want you to see. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Go, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight. Before we see what Jesus said, let's picture it from the point of view of Bartimaeus. Can you imagine what it was like for him? One minute he couldn't see anything. He's totally blind. The next moment everything is in vision. What an incredible change, and how quickly it must have happened. Because as so often, Mark uses his special word, immediately he could see. Immediately. There wasn't even a pause. One minute he couldn't see, and the next minute he could. Absolutely fantastic. And that's the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's no convalescence with Jesus. It's immediate. And Bartimaeus looks up and he can see. His whole life changed in a flash. But you know, your life can change too. If we spiritualize that for a moment, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, and if you let him take control of your life, you'll begin to see in a way you've never seen before, because your spiritual eyes will be open, and until now they've been blinded. You've been dead in your trespasses and sins. Your spirit's never come alive unto God. But the moment you give yourself to Jesus, the changes begin.
But there's one other thing here. I love it. Jesus says, go. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith. Your faith. Bartimaeus believed that if he could come to Jesus, he would see again. Do you believe if you came to Jesus, your life could be changed? I guarantee some of you are thinking, nothing could ever change my situation. No, your situation may not change, but you will. And because you will, you'll be able to cope with every situation of life. We've seen time and again, as people have truly given themselves to Jesus Christ, their situation never changes. Their problems are no different, but they are. They become totally new people in Jesus. And that's the key. And it's back to what we saw yesterday. Because they're new people, they can cope with life. And they can cope with the difficulties. And I'm sure Bartimaeus did. The sad fact I see is that Bartimaeus began to follow Jesus to Jerusalem. And I have a fear that he saw Jesus die. And I'm sure he was touched, if not hurt. Here was a man who had healed him. And you see, the fantastic fact is, the people said all Jesus ever did was things that were good. And because they were so good, the people put him to death. The authorities couldn't stand it. They had to get rid of him. He was a problem to them. And so often when people are a problem, the only thing they can think of is getting rid of them. And that's what they did with Jesus. But it's not surprising. Where else would Bartimaeus go? He's no longer going to beg, so he begins to follow the one who's healed him. Let me ask you something. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've been healed. Are you really following him? Are you traveling with him? Is he traveling with you? It was a few weeks ago I preached on a Friday night the most incredible message I'd ever found. Christ, our life. You see, it's not that when Jesus becomes your Savior, you take him on board as a companion, or you take him on board as an assistant, or you have him there to help you when you're in trouble. He becomes your whole life. That's very different, isn't it? And that's what Jesus wants to be. Throughout this day, he wants to flow through your life. He wants to be your life. Christ, our life. And that's what I believe it was for Bartimaeus. He was a changed man that day. Why? Because his faith had made him whole. He believed that Jesus could do it. And Jesus did. And Jesus wants to open your eyes, your spiritual eyes. And he wants to do it now.